What's up everybody, EJ here, back with another video. So today we're going to be talking about ways to farm stubs when MLB The Show 22 comes out, early access starting on April 1st. Very excited for the new game and definitely want to try to help you guys out and try to make as many stubs as possible at the beginning part of the game. So the number one way, as is the case every year, and I know it seems pretty obvious, but it's going to be flipping the market. Definitely going to be one of the most essential things for you to get started with, especially at the beginning of the game when card interest is insanely high. Cards get sold insanely fast, and you'll see some even and you'll even see some stub gaps too that are weirdly high for cards being sold that fast. And you definitely be able to pick off some of those signs. But definitely, I think the save option every year whenever the game comes out is to flip two different kinds of cards number one type of card you're going to want to flip are equipment diamond equipment specifically any of these at any given time when the game first comes out are going to be viable so long as they're going fast and in order to make sure the cards are going fast you guys can make sure to go check out show zone show zone is the best possible resource to find any sort of market details they're going to be continuing in 22 i'm not familiar with show zone but i'm just saying you better go check them out because they're going to help you flip in the market but yeah diamond equipment does normally not sell very fast you'll notice throughout the year as the game goes on people are just not interested in equipment however the beginning of the year equipment is always good and the reason is because people are very interested it goes fast and the stub gaps on equipment especially diamond equipment are all very very large i mean look at this so i'm obviously at the end of the 21 game cycle looking at this but i mean you can see just insane stub gaps obviously these cards are just not being sold which is why the gaps are getting that big but you can see even at the beginning of the game they will get very volatile and the stub gaps that you'll see are insane so if you catch an equipment card at the right time you can make so many stubs on it the other type of cards that you're gonna want to flip are going to be gold cards and we're gonna say specifically gold live series cards and the reason is again they sell very fast people want to finish collections especially at the very beginning of the game and people want to rush to finish collections especially if you go ahead and you buy the stubs necessary to complete the collections you just want to go in the market and you're just going to want to do it as quickly as possible and you can take advantage of that if you're flipping i mean people will literally buy cards with the buy now price for anything and especially the beginning of the year when again these cards are being sold very fast and there's usually pretty low risk because you're not buying too far above the sell now price which is interesting because compared to other card series golds generally do not get too far above the 1k unless they are a good chance to increase in price later on due to the player's performance during the season but yeah normally they're going to stick around a thousand so even if you screw up the best thing about it you can just quick sell you can make at least most of your stubs back there will be some cards at the beginning of the year that will only be sell now for maybe 1300 so at most you're losing 300 stubs which isn't that much especially when you can easily make that back within the span of one card and again just the appeal with these they just sell so fast people need golds there's so many golds needed for the collections it's an insane amount just scout down my recommendation again you're gonna want to definitely go check out show zone but also specifically if i were to give any piece of advice i would say look for stub gaps of 250 or above obviously 21 is gonna be bad representation because everyone who's done the collections has already done them right uh we're at the very end of the game cycle here but yeah i mean here's actually a good example john means this is actually not an unreasonable gap that you will see at the beginning of the year maybe a little bit low on the sell now usually you won't see it at quick set value until a few months in but the point is you can generally get cards around this stub gap here also make sure obviously to factor in tax when i say 250 i also mean within that subtracted 10 percent i don't want to go too far into flipping we can maybe make another youtube video about that but i want to continue going on with different ways that's definitely going to be your number one way to do it but actually the main thing that i want to focus on is going to be playing br and you got to hear me out with this yes obviously going 12 and 0 is insanely difficult i'm a good player and even i struggle going 12 and 0 a lot of the time but there's a new wrinkle that will be the show this year and that is the Nintendo Switch. For the first time in MLB The Show history, we are now above two consoles. After, for the first time in the show history last year, going above one console, now we have added a third after the Xbox last year, and that is the Nintendo Switch. SDS announced that the Nintendo Switch will have 30 FPS capabilities with MLB, which doesn't sound like a lot, but remember, 
MLB stadiums on the PS4, if you're on lower gen, you're used to lower gen, they play at 30 FPS. It's not an amazing experience, don't get me wrong. It's not good. There's a reason why I got a PS5. But if you're just playing BR, you're playing on Ulster, the PCI is big, the pitch speeds aren't very fast, pitches are moving, you know, in big looping motions where you can more easily get to them. It's definitely possible on this difficulty in BR. As well on the Switch, you can actually use Control Freaks on a Switch Pro controller. If you do have a Switch Pro controller, they fit. I took my PS5 Control Freaks and put it on the Switch Pro controller and it fit right on. It moved around okay. Everything was smooth. You can take that into a BR game and you should be all right to hit. The main good thing about playing on the Switch, which is the reason why I'm bringing it up, is because the people playing on the Switch are quite frankly just not going to be very good at MLB The Show players. I mean, I remember playing the co-op in the MLB The Show 22 tech test and every Switch player I faced was not the greatest. It's a new console. It's having an entirely new audience that may have never played a baseball video game before. I mean, Nintendo Switch isn't exactly known for sports games. It's been the main platform for stuff like Mario and Pokemon of late so introducing something like MLB the show will be a massive difference in people who play the game versus the other games that switch provides where I'm going with this is that you can go on a Nintendo switch similar to MLB the show 21 you can go up here you can go to my profile probably be a similar menu option and you can turn cross play off and so what this does is this guarantees that you play Nintendo switch players you can go on a Nintendo Switch, you can legitimately just smurf against bad players and go 12-0 much easier than you would be able to on the PlayStation or even the Xbox, and the Xbox was much easier than PlayStation. But you can make the argument on Xbox that perhaps there's more of an audience for sports games already, and I know personally that a lot of people that have Xboxes bought PlayStations just to play MLB. I wouldn't say there's nearly as much of a crossover between Switch players and MLB players as much as there is between Xbox players and MLB players previously. Not to mention just in general, the performance on the Switch isn't going to be very good compared to the PlayStation or the Xbox. So you can assume the players, number one, have never played the game before most likely, and number two are also just not going to get good performance from it. It is very easy to conceive that you can just go onto the Switch face the worst players ever and just farm at least getting nine wins consistently. Getting nine wins at the beginning of the year is good. That will get you usually a card that goes for about 30k for the first few weeks of the year. Obviously any further than that and then you start talking about cards that are into the hundreds of thousands. Another thing I'd like to get to is events. So events you can use the same trick if you want to on your Nintendo Switch. You can just go on your Switch, you can turn crossplay off, and you're just facing Switch players. In events, it's even easier because you can friendly quit at least as up to MLB The Show 21. It's probably going to remain in MLB The Show 22. Grinding event wins at the beginning of the year are very valuable. You can get cards that go for a lot at the beginning of the year. As well, if you really want to, you can actually hold on to cards and events at the beginning of the year because later on in the year, when those cards get more scarce, of course, their price will go way up. Many event cards go for several hundred thousand stubs or even up to a million in some cases. Obviously, adding the 9 win and 12 win diamond rewards potentially, or at least the 12 win diamond reward will be valuable. Also remember that most golds also go for more at the beginning of the year too, so even winning 6 games can still get you some good rewards. Finally, the last thing I want to talk about today is going to be going back to the market here, and this is definitely winning for before, but is going to be investing in cards. Many cards this year, just like every year, go to diamond from gold, from silver to gold, anything like that. And it's a lot easier to predict than you think. My biggest recommendation for investing on cards is going on fan graphs, going on baseball reference, searching up these guys' numbers, and investing based off that, specifically based off of strikeouts per nine, walks per nine, and hits per nine. Those are gonna be your three main things, especially strikeouts and walks per nine. If you have a pitcher that maybe even has an ERA a little bit higher, but they're striking out a ton of guys and they're not walking many guys, you can go and invest on that card. Chances are they're probably going to improve as the year goes on because usually stats stabilize like that with cards. And you could easily have a diamond on your hands if you had a goal before or gold on your hands if you had a silver before. That's specifically for pitchers though. If you want to talk about hitters, I would recommend going on Baseball Savant and checking out some of their metrics for hitters. If a hitter has a terrific hard hit rate, as well as reasonably okay walk and strikeout rates, it means that even if their performance maybe isn't the greatest then, it's probably gonna improve as the year goes on. You could easily get into that card and you can invest on it and make stubs on it later in the year. A great example of this last year was Frankie Montas. His ERA wasn't exceptionally low, but he had a very good striker rate, 
a very good walk rate and those two combined together made him improve his performance as the season went on and led to him getting a gold card from a silver from SDS. A great example of a hitting card is Paul Goldschmidt. Goldschmidt got out to a slow start by surface numbers last year. If you check Baseball Savin, even in the month of July, his stat cast metrics were excellent. He was hitting the ball hard. He wasn't striking out that much. His walk rate was pretty good. If you follow that, you knew that he was going to do well as the year went on. Sure enough, he caught fire and he ended up getting a diamond card by the end of the year. Point is, it is possible to predict this stuff and it's easier than you think if you're smart about it. And if you notice trends that are going on that show that a player will improve their performance, and that maybe at that time they're underperforming, but are a good sleeper for later on in the year. Make sure to pay attention to those cards. You can make millions if you have the stubs to invest in them. That's all I got. If you got any questions, make sure to let me know in the comments below. I will try to answer all of them, as many of them as I can. And yeah, guys, if you enjoy watching this video, make sure to like, subscribe, follow my socials down in the description below. And yeah, guys, have a good and rest of your day.